it's for the city and county of San Francisco to not only recover from a major hazard in an expedited manner, I mean that we don't want to sit around for five years like New Orleans did waiting for their first plan, but we also want to do so with as many pre-event residents and communities as possible. There's a really good chance most people will survive a disaster, but the reality is, is that during restoration and recovery, they most likely will not be able to remain in that city um, and be part of the restoration and recovery. And this is a very big deal because I don't think that any city that is charged with trying to plan the response and recovery, um, if it doesn't take into consideration that it's doing so with the idea that the people that live there currently are going to be part of the recovery, that's kind of a default in their responsibilities. If your neighborhoods aren't back online and full of people, you will not have a recovery. The businesses won't come back until the people are back in the neighborhoods, and the people won't come back in the neighborhoods until the businesses are back. So what I always try and think about is, is like, you know, what's the legacy going to be of this effort? And hopefully it'll be something like this, that the city made smart and measurable investments in capacity building initiatives that empower communities to actively participate in the recovery of San Francisco from a major hazard. And the reality is, is that the event is absolutely essential, and it's absolutely essential that we do everything we can, that everyone survive the event, and as much um, property is sustained through that event, and, it, and it's back online. But the reality is, is that this response phase is actually relatively short, comparative to the entire event. The next phase that we see that actually is one of the most troublesome phases is the restoration period. And this is when the people who live in a community really get a chance to see whether or not things are going to work out or not. And if you walk out your door and finally the fires are out and the yellow tape is up and things are sort of like seem to be stabilizing from the, the event perspective, but then you look around and all the schools are closed, all the buildings, all the restaurants and, rest and businesses are boarded up, um, they're fighting down at City Hall, your neighbors are all packing their stuff up and getting on boats, guess what? You're probably going to join in. And that's exactly the scenario we want to avoid. Because we want to use the restoration period of an event to inspire people that we're going to regroup, come together, and advance on recovery on, on a totally unprecedented level. Everyone always in Chicago talks about Marshall Fields and how after the Great Fire in Chicago, he went down to his building, the lot that his building was on, and was you know, smoke and ash for miles all around him. And he turned and he said to everyone around him, it is on this site I will build the world's greatest department store. And that one remark set forth the recovery of Chicago. And that's the kind of attitude that we're going to need to have in this town. But the only way we're going to do that is in advance figuring out what we're going to do during that period. And lastly, in, in the recovery phase, it is essential that in order to accelerate this as soon as possible, instead of this being a 20 year, this being a 10 or a 5 year, that in this period right here, everything we do translates to shortening this period like this. And that's the kind of work that we can do at the city level, but also at the neighborhood level as well. So what is our challenge? Well, first of all, the issue by nature is negative. I mean, you know, you should get together. Wow, well, your building could collapse and, you know, people will be trapped and you learn how to lift things up and people are like, wow, that's intense and kind of scary all at once and it, you know, I, I, I want to work on that, but, you know, I've got to do my laundry or something like that. And the reality is it's like the issue by, in its own right, sometimes can be intimidating folks who, frankly, the only earthquake they've ever seen is one on television and it's usually a pretty intense experience. Um, the other challenge we have is San Francisco has a permanently transient population. Um, this makes it also equally difficult to get people to invest in skills and behaviors that may not be used for five or ten years, because frankly, who knows if they'll be here. I mean, let's look at it. Here is San Francisco. If you lived here in 1990, there's over a 50% chance you don't live here anymore. Think about that. Over 50%. San Francisco is more like a cruise ship, that people are just sort of coming on board, having the San Francisco experience, and then People get married, they fall in love. As soon as they have the kid, they leave. We also have this issue of the fact that we don't really have a really great convening infrastructure on an enterprise level in the city. If you ever look at where all the neighborhood associations are and then how active those neighborhood associations are and how many members they have and then look at the footprints of neighborhood watches and other convening platforms, you realize that we just don't have the same kind of convening platforms that most neighborhood uh, cities do have. So we have to really address the fact that we have this challenge in, in the city as well and think about new ways to bring people together and create those relationships.